Hey everybody, I'm Cece Bell, the author and illustrator of the book El Defo, which is my autobiographical graphic novel about growing up as a kid using hearing aids to help me hear. I'm going to be doing a semi-reading of the book, chapter by chapter, but what I'll really be doing is giving you the inside story, all the little tidbits and extras you could ever dream of. So, grab your copy of the book and join me as I give you the inside story of the book, El Defe. Okie dokie, let's start with chapter one. But before we start with chapter one, what came before chapter one? Well, I was born the day after Christmas, 1970, which was a long time ago and makes me rather old. I am almost 50. 50! <laughs> 50! But anyway, yes, when I was born in 1970, I was born with hearing, and so the first few years of my life, I was able to hear and learn how to talk and did lots of fun things, and that is where chapter one begins. So, begins. So, chapter one starts with me in 1975, I'm four and a half years old and living in Richmond, Virginia, in a really cool townhouse in the fan district of the city. Really cool little neighborhood. And I did regular little kid things. I drew on the mirror with my mother's lipstick, which is a very pleasing sensation. Try it. You've got plenty of time to do it. Um, I watched television with my older brother, Ashley, who was seven years older, and my older sister, Sarah, who was five years older. And in the panel, in this story, we are watching one of our favorite shows, which is Batman, which um, was this really funny show that had um, Adam West and Burt Ward and a very awesome song that sounded like this. Awesome. Um, and then the story goes on. I got to ride on the back of my father's bicycle. And back in the 70s, we didn't have to wear helmets. Woohoo! Um, freedom! And I played with my friend, Emma, who lived across the street from me. And we'll talk a lot more about Emma later. Um, and I also really enjoyed singing. And, of course, the song I'm singing here is actually Yellow Submarine by The Beatles. And it is the last song that I remember singing when I still had my hearing. So, um... I'd sing it for you now, but it might bring a tear to your eye. And not a tear of joy, but a tear of great and deep sadness. So I will refrain from that. Anyway, um, when the story continues, I get really sick all of a sudden. And in real life, I think I got sick a little more gradually. But I decided to focus on all the throwing up that I remember doing. In the book, there's only two panels of me throwing up. But if this were an absolutely true depiction of that moment, there would be many, many pages, many, many panels of me throwing up. And if you need a fun activity to do while you're sitting at home, um, draw yourself throwing up and add all kinds of wonderful little chunks in it. Pieces of pizza, ravioli, bricks, dirt, um, cotton. Just you can put anything in the vomit that you draw. But anyway, back to this story, back to this story. Because it is a little more serious than that, right? Um, so I did, I got very, very sick. And my parents took me to the hospital. And where are we now? And what they had to do was they had to stick a needle in my back. And that is called a spinal tap. And they're actually taking fluid from your spine and analyzing it to see what's going on. And what they figured out, what they, being the doctors, the doctors figured out that I had a disease called meningitis, 
and meningitis is an infection of the membranes of your brain and also of your spinal cord. And the kind that I had was a bacterial infection. So I had to stay in the hospital for quite a while. I was there for two weeks. And during that two week period, um, I lost, that's when I lost my hearing, but I don't think I was completely aware of it because the hospital was kind of a scary place to be. And I was worried about when will I ever go home again? You know, um, I missed my brother and sister. I missed my parents. So um, they measured my head a lot because they were worried that it would swell up, which is pretty dangerous. And my head hurt really, really bad. And something that's not in the book is that my head hurt so bad that I was pulling pulling my hair out of my head. And so I actually had a lot of bald spots. So it was pretty painful, apparently. And um, they kept measuring my head, and I eventually had a roommate who I don't actually remember, so I sort of made somebody up for the book. But um, I did a lot of drawing. You'll see me drawing pictures um, in the book. I'm drawing a picture of a um, rainbow and also of a little girl, um, yeah, a little girl that uh, with a triangle body. And apparently I drew about a hundred of these drawings because what else was I going to do, right? Um, so there's a little bit about me not getting any ice cream. And a lot of kids who read the book, that really bothers them. And it bothered me too. But the reason I wasn't getting any ice cream was because I didn't um, hear the nurse offer me any. And that's one of the first places in the book where I use the speech balloon to show what's happening. And if you look really carefully, you will see that the speech sort of fades away. And that's me trying to show what that hearing loss might have been like. So, um, at first, I didn't get ice cream, but eventually, my mom made sure that I got ice cream. So I did get some eventually. Um, there was a moment where I waved to my brother and sister um, outside the window, and they were definitely wearing that uh, the yellow dress on my sister and the brown suit on my brother. And I watched TV without volume because I couldn't really hear the TV at this point, and the TV show that I'm watching is Yogi Bear, Yogi Bear with Boo Boo, very fun little animated show, um, and I was pretty confused during this time, I think, but again, more worried about when am I going home, and when are they going to give me the next shot, and less um, concerned about whether or not I was hearing. I think I was just sort of in a daze. So, it wasn't all bad, though, as the book shows you. I got lots of great gifts, including the one and only Miss Bun. And so, this right here is the bunny rabbit that my grandmother, Granny Bell, that's what I called her, Granny Bell, she made Miss Bun for me. And you can see Miss Bun is rather old, too. And um, I loved on her a whole lot. She's got a sweet little tail and these little little bloomers. La, 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 la. Um, so that's Miss Bun, the real Miss Bun. And what else did I get? Oh, I got, um, I got a book called The Meanest Squirrel I Ever Met, which is by Jean Zion and Margaret Boyne Graham, who are a, or were rather, a husband and wife team who are really well known for their books about Harry, the Dirty Dog, which are awesome. But The Meanest Squirrel I Ever Met is one of the greatest books I've ever read. I highly recommend it. And that book was given to me by my sister. And then um, I got some Winnie the Pooh slippers. And I tried to find a picture of those, but I couldn't find the ones that seemed like the right ones. So, oh well. I don't have a Page picture. eight, there's this moment where I get out of bed and sort of actually tumble out of bed and 
have a lot of trouble walking. So there's only one page of this in the book. But in real life, um, when I got back home from the hospital, I had to spend a lot of time relearning how to walk um, because part of what happened, I didn't just lose my hearing, I lost my sense of balance too. So it took many months for me to get back to a regular way of walking. And I remember my mom um, putting me up on a brick wall and holding my hand and having me walk in a straight line back and forth on the wall just to help me get that, um, my balance and my gait back. So it took a lot longer than in the book. Um, but I did eventually go home on page nine. I get to go home and that was very exciting. And, um, when I got home, I discovered that my, my, um, siblings, Ashley and Sarah were suddenly being very, very nice to me. And one of the nice things they did was they gave me a stuffed animal Eeyore. And here is that Eeyore that Ashley and Sarah gave me, the one and only and got a little tail that actually had to be taped on, much kind of like what happens to Eeyore in the book. And this little Eeyore toy was made by Sears and Roebuck, which is where a lot of us kids from the 70s got our toys back in the day. So, Eeyore. Um, and there's also a moment where my brother made all these little paper boats for me and put candy in the boats and hid them all over the house. And that really did happen. Um, that was a really neat moment, running around the house looking for the little paper boats. And um, my sister did sit with me as I tried to fall asleep at night because I had some major separation anxiety. I was very worried that um, I would lose my parents and my siblings and go back to the hospital all over again. So I was very clingy and needy. So that's why on page 11, I never let my mother out of my sight until I do. And so on page 12, the last page of chapter one, um, this is sort of a, my version of events, but my mother's version of events was that about two weeks after I had been home from the hospital, um, I was looking for my mother because I couldn't find her and I was yelling for her and getting more and more frantic and running around the house trying to find her and she was right behind me following me and yelling my name and I never turned around. So that is how my mom figured it out and possibly how I also figured out that something was wrong. So. That is the conclusion of the inside story of chapter one and join me next time as we go into the uh, next chapter, which is chapter two. Yay. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.